just from community growth. Um, so uh, after that State of the Map conference, we, um, as a community, put some effort into trying to find sources of open data. Uh, obviously, Ian found some. Um, there was discussion about using Tiger, the um, Tiger address ranges, but um, that really isn't a good idea because, first of all, they're inaccurate uh, in part by law because they're not allowed to give out specific uh, locations and addresses for privacy reasons. And um, Nominatum actually already uses the Tiger address ranges to fall back on if it doesn't find an address in OSM. So it, it was really kind of pointless to, to do that. So we decided to do what OSM does best and go local. Um, start talking to cities and, and counties. Um, uh, Ian actually set up a, sp a spreadsheet in Google Docs to track uh, various sources of, uh, of information that we could find. And um, I, th I think that kind of eventually evolved into this uh, open address concept. Um, so this is just kind of a quick grab of the, that uh, spreadsheet. Um, just says location, how many addresses, what license, uh, contact information, uh, that kind of stuff. So the OSM import process is hard. Um, well, at least it's hard to get right. Uh, anyone here doing import? Obviously Ian has. Um, and a lot of people who have have gotten angry emails from people, or not necessarily angry, but you know, saying, well, you should just go outside and, and map more instead of doing an import, that kind of stuff. Um, so sometimes the process is, is a little bit adversarial. Um, and there's you know, some reason for this, um, just that um, there have been a lot of bad, bad imports done, unfortunately. And um, so we've got things like um, extra tags that we really don't need, like tagging the area of a feature. It's like, well, this is already a geo database. We don't need to tag what the area is. Um, and you know, failed uploads. Uh, sometimes the worst worst thing is when people have good data and uh, decent conversion process, but then they don't understand how the OSM API works, and they try to shove, you know, 100,000 uh, objects in, and the upload process fails, and then they don't know how to recover from that. Um, and myself and a couple other people in this room have, have spent significant time cleaning up after those kinds of imports. So um, this is just kind of a quick rundown of how, how I got through the process. Uh, the first part is obviously you're obtaining permission. Um, as uh, Ian pointed out, it can be tricky sometimes. Um, in my case, um, you know, talking with licenses with local GIS people is often kind of hard. Uh, in my case, they, they were very receptive to the idea, but they didn't, you know, didn't, they're not lawyers. Um, we didn't really want to get lawyers involved because then no one's happy. Um, and so I just had to, had to talk to them. In, in my case, it was like they, they assumed that OpenStreetMap was non-commercial. Uh, so my, my exchange with them went kind of like this. You know, hey, you've got some great data. I'd love to use it. And they were like, oh, sure. You know, we, we'd love to, to do that. Just uh, sign this form that says you won't use it commercially. And um, of course, that doesn't work for us. But after, after reading the form and talking with them some more, uh, it was clear that basically their, their concern is using name and address together um, for solici solicitation. And when I made clear that I had absolutely no interest in names, I just wanted anonymous address points, uh, they were perfectly fine with that. So the next issue is data quality. Once I got access, um, I, just, um, I knew they had a lot of data. I just didn't know exactly what it was. Um, and originally, I was going to use just parcel data. But then once I got access to their server, I actually found a, a much better uh, data source. Um, and you know, this is sometimes uh, where 
imports go wrong. You know, authoritative data is not perfect data. Um, it's often very good, but um, and a lot of people who import, a lot of people who are professional GIS um, people often just kind of have the opinion that well, my data is correct, so I'm just going to push it into OpenStreetMap, and you know, I'm I'm the the law basically. So that's that's not really how OSM works. You know, it's a community. We know every every GIS data source has its quirks, um, so we like to be careful. Um, and in my case, I had some high density areas. It had some, of course, high density is relative in Kansas, um, but like the downtown area um, and a place we call Aggieville. It's our local bar district, um, right by the college. It has some. Uh, just some weird addressing issues with, um, like, somebody owns a building, but they split it into two and made two separate shops out of it, but the, the county only records that as a single address. Um, but I had already mapped some of the things, and um, so it's just that kind of stuff. Uh, apartment complexes were an interesting nugget. <coughs> um, I'll have a slide on that in a minute. And mobile home parks, I actually left out of the import initially uh, because they were complicated. Um, so this is basically the raw data that I got. It's uh, centroids over buildings, which is pretty much perfect for OSM uh, as far as geocoding goes. Um, and even out in the middle of nowhere, this is like five miles from the nearest town, it's still very accurate. But of course, nothing is perfect. Um, you know, this is a pretty minor, minor error. But um, if you look close, the house is actually still under construction. So that's probably just a parcel centroid. And um, you know, next year this data set may have the the point moved on top of the building as well. So here's um, what I was talking about: apartment complexes. Um, there's actually two different apartment complexes in this picture. The one on the bottom has one point per building and it was easy. Uh, the top one has one point per uh, unit, but they're all kind of stacked on top of each other in a, in a row there. And I wasn't really interested in, in importing the individual apartment units, so I just um, stripped out the units and, and came up with unique address points per stairwell, basically, in this case. Um, and in some cases, I was able to use the apartment data to derive the uh, like the building letter or number. Um, you know, if the addresses were apartment G14, um, so then I, I tagged that on the building. Um, that was a manual process. And like I was saying, with mobile homes, there's. You see one point down towards the bottom that's at the center of the of the mobile home park, and it has an address that's the main road, but the actual units have nothing but a number, a lot number on them. And in this particular one, I knew that they had named streets and inside of the complex that the the county just hadn't hadn't recorded for some reason. Um, so that's why I just kind of left these out of the initial import uh, until I could figure out exactly what to do with them. And then of course there's the documentation step of the import guidelines. Um, this is just a screenshot of the wiki page I made. Uh, there are actually a couple of data sets. Um, a couple I haven't actually completed importing yet. Um, but here's the, the address is one at the bottom with a bunch of links off to uh, actual .osm files um, and in a couple of different states during the conversion process I put up new new versions and asked for feedback uh, from community members. So here's the technical process I used. Um, basically the, the building centroids didn't have uh, city or zip information so I got those from the parcel the parcel data that I ended up not using initially um, and then I converted it with OGR to OSM and uh, had my own um, tag translation file. Uh, it's all written in Python. <coughs> and 
and then I used uh, Paul Norman's address merge to conflate the, the data, uh, strip out duplicates, and uh, expand points onto building outlines when, when reasonable to do so. And uh, I actually worked with him. He was developing this software as I was doing the import, so I was kind of his, his um, tester and person who requested new features. Uh, my, my tag translation was um, designed to be very picky. Uh, with my amount of data, I could afford to basically manually review pretty much anything that looked out of place. Um, so there's, you know, here's a basically a dictionary of uh, street abbreviations that I used to expand the, the uh, street names. And um, when there wasn't anything you know, if I couldn't find anything, it actually threw a Python error, and I had to go look and see see what it was and, and find all of the exceptions. Now you can see down there at the bottom, there's a, I think it's a DR35 that was supposed to be drive. So you know, just typos and um, you know inconsistencies. Uh, then there were some points in the in the data that had actually two addresses that were separated by an OR. And this was uh, neighborhoods that were still under, under construction. And I guess they hadn't decided which, which road they were going to put the, the property on. Um, and there were some um, just weird punctuation marks and missing data. Um, so I just tagged those with a fix me, fix me tag and then um, loaded up in JAWSM and inspected them. And, figured out what to do with them. Um, at the very end of the tag conversion process, I had a, a fail safe that if there wasn't a, a house number, then I basically just took all the information from the shape file, put it into one tag, and, and added a fix me to force me to look at that as well. Um, so I ended up with over 3,000 fix me's, but a lot of those I excluded um, outright because um, there were apartment complexes and mobile home parks. So the rem remainder I was able to f fix a um, you know, couple, couple hours of work. Um, there were often clusters of related errors that were, you know, once you figure out one, you can fix, fix a whole cluster. Um, some fix me's were left in the, uh, in the uploaded data. Um, like those OR addresses that I mentioned, I left those um, to remind me to go uh, survey them once the neighborhood is complete. So then um, I went on to manually checking the data. I just loaded it up in JAWSM and uh, just kind of looked around, selected random points, um, you know, just kind of looked in the, in the drop down view. You can see um, it kind of aggregates the data. Um, for some reason, the street name. Started with a dash. Uh, not sure why, but uh, there were a couple things like that. Um, here's another one. The zip code data is pretty good, but everything selected here is zip code 66502. And obviously, there are some uh, stragglers out there to the left that are obviously incorrect. Um, and I'm pretty sure the reason this happened is because everybody, well, the majority of the population lives in 66502, and uh, so when you're inputting, it's sometimes a muscle, you know, muscle memory to just put in the zip code. Um, so then I used address merge. Um, it takes existing data in a in a PG snapshot schema, and then loads your new data alongside it uh, into into separate tables, and then it can do uh, some complex spatial analysis and um, tag transforms and um, it's, it's pretty slick. And then it spits out um, two files that you, you can upload uh, after further review, of course. Um, so for example, it would take a, a point, if there's one point inside of a building outline, it would take that and merge the tags onto the building outline and then uh, not actually upload the point, just modify the building outline. Uh, but if there are two nodes within a single building, then it, um, 
you know, it's it, it's as conservative as, as possible, basically. If it doesn't know that it can do something, it just leaves it alone. So in this case, it just left the, the two address nodes alone. Um, and of course, there's buffers you can configure. Um, you know, if a point is just outside of a building, it can still be merged. Um, and that's all configurable via command line options. Um, the other thing it did is take addresses that matched but weren't quite complete and added missing information to them. So that was, um, that was pretty helpful, just to get everything in the same schema. So I ended up uploading uh, about 17,300 new objects and modifying 1,500 existing ones, which ended up looking kind of like this in the city. Uh, the blue is new objects being uploaded, and the yellow is existing data. And actually, a lot of the existing ones are um, buildings that Ian down here traced after we got access to, I got access to my county's aerial imagery uh, a couple years ago and put it up, and he was playing with it and couldn't resist tracing some buildings. Um, and and at the time, I was like, oh, great, now I'm going to have to go find the addresses of all these buildings that he's, he traced. But uh, with this import, it automatically fixed that. Um, and you can see in the middle here is the university that has no addresses because the entire campus has one address according to the Postal Service. Um, and then they have their own internal mail system that delivers to, to the various departments and buildings. Um, a few errors did make it through. Um, I've come across uh, a handful uh, just when I'm out mapping. Um, you know, sometimes the, the county data wasn't perfect and the, the node was too far away from the building to be merged. Um, I remember I saw that on the Burger King downtown. So I, I actually mapped the address um, while I was sitting there on my phone. And I got home and noticed there was already an address right next to it. Um, and the one thing that it, address merge can't really detect is like shops and restaurants and whatever that are that are already there and don't have an address. Um, and you know, right next to it now is a, is an address point that doesn't have any POI data on it. Um, it's virtually impossible to to do that automatically. Um, so that's um, yeah, nothing's perfect, but. I feel like the signal-to-noise ratio was exceptionally good in this import, um, so I'm I'm pretty happy with it. There is one thing about nominatum that I figured out. Um, this is all the points that have an address city of Manhattan. The actual city of Manhattan is you can barely see it, I guess, but the dark blue outline. Um, so anything outside of that. Um, if you search for it in nominatum, it won't find it. Um, because in order to, I think, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on this, but I think to reduce database size, it, it aggregates the data and puts it associates, associate, associates it with the street um, and then links the actual address nodes to the street so it, it's not duplicating information. But in that process, it doesn't actually use the tags. It uses um, basically its own internal structure of where it thinks cities are uh, based on the boundaries. Um, it can be fixed by adding the, the adder city tag to, to the road. Um, but I consider this to be kind of a software bug to be, to be fixed by the tool. So I haven't really gone, gone through and done that. Here's a snapshot of uh, the tiles. You see the buildings up top have the address on them, and on the bottom they're just points. Um, yeah. So good imports are possible, but it does take time. I think it took me was it two or three months um, of calendar time. You know, I've said I've got a day job, and you know, spent. A weekend here or there on it, um, and some of the time was you know waiting on Paul to figure out some bug in the in the address merge tool or, or something like that, um, and I engaged the 
the Imports US mailing list and the, the committee to, to review my work. Um, yeah, I feel like it was a good import. It was, it was um, you know, very local. I'm obviously living there. I have an interest in maintaining the data. Um, I haven't actually managed to do a, an update yet. I was hoping to do it before the conference. Um, and again, with my volume of data, I think I would just go through the same process. Uh, address merge will eliminate everything that's already in OSM, and then I can review um, new addresses or um, you know, add them or, or ignore them, in this case, maybe. So, questions? Yeah? Uh, were the data points in the database that you were importing from what we would consider nodes, or were any of them areas? And if so, how did you deal with areas? Uh, they were all points. Yeah, in the shapefile, it was all points. So I didn't have to deal with areas. I think address merge claims to support that, though. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah? Yeah, those PLIs that were already mapped and put that address point next to it, are you going to just go back manually and edit Yeah, I've, I fix them when I find them. Okay. Um, existing addresses when you might have sort of a partial or incomplete address if, if you find if you found say just a street number on an object what did you do in that case um, so I actually went through before I did the import and and made sure that wasn't the case um, <laughs> again with with my limited data I could I could do a lot of that manually um, that like in a import the size of Chicago would have been uh, infeasible to do that. Um, so I actually made sure there was a address city tag, I think, too. Well, no, I think I let address merge take care of that. Um, but yeah. I, I want to say that it's not actually that hard to kind of stuff in an important size of Chicago. It's not that time to make a minute. It took me a while. <clears throat> but it wasn't, it didn't actually, it wasn't that hard. So don't let that put you off. The manual part of doing it isn't that much work. It's tedious, it's sort of mapping. Yeah. Mostly uh, the approval process is. Um, I mean, for me, it was uh, making, getting the license change to happen. Stuff. The life change of the data happened. Um, and <coughs> I would say that actually, it, it, the data was good from the start. But the actual important process would have been the most time to me, but just because I, I, I was not exactly optimizing it. I, I think if I had used Toby's address, or Paul's address stuff like Toby did, they might have made it a little faster. And yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot of the time for me was um, just waiting on on um, bug fixes and import meetings. Um, you know, I I'm a pretty experienced OSM mapper, so I I didn't make some of the common mistakes of uh, importing useless tags and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Does Manhattan and Raleigh County have uh, consolidated GIS data stored then? That they, it's the same data for both of them? Um, I think it's complicated. Uh, the file I got had both addresses in them, but actually I did, I did find out there were two distinct formats of address, and one was for the city. It came from the city, and the, the other was the, the county. Okay. Um, so they, they did merge some stuff on their side, but it wasn't, it wasn't all in the same schema. So I actually had to, had to handle parsing two different address formats in the same file, which is kind of annoying. But, yeah. Um, I, I missed the beginning. I was wondering, did you keep any, like, uh, unique IDs in the database? Uh, I actually didn't. Um, because in this case, I'm, I'm only importing points, and the address, the house number, and street name is basically a primary key. Um, with the caveat of like Main Street being in two cities, um, 
but I think address merge has a distance you can give it um, to where it'll consider it a different street if it's if it's far enough away. All right. Well, where's the after party? <laughs>